Uh, it's 9 p.m. I just finished editing and pulling everything off of this phone. Uh, it says down here at the bottom of the screen that I have 36 minutes and 42 seconds as a whole for data on this phone, which is actually pretty good. Which would be an actually really, really good size for a full day vlog. But it's one of those kind of things where, um, oh, well, honestly, yeah, that, that honestly does work for me for a while. So I'm not exactly freaking out about anything, but I do want to get a hold of a, uh, one of those mini SD memory card chip adapters. Because I found this old phone, and this is a Samsung Galaxy S8 Active. It has a much better camera and a bunch of other really nice things. There's a bunch of data in this still, and I can't get it out because the actual connection for the port here at the bottom fried. Which is really, really ironic because it still connects to charge the battery. It just won't actually connect to the entirety of the phone to be able to pull data from it. And, like, the other conversation point somebody once said was, what if the cable's what's broken? And it's like, you know, the variable of that being a possibility does exist. But I'd rather just stick an SD card in that and then manually go through an entire day transferring everything off of that phone onto the SD card, put the SD card in my laptop, pull everything off of that, and bada-bing, bada-boom, I have all the data off of that phone. Um... Eventually, I would love to get the replacement parts to fix that phone, but I'm not confident enough to be like, oh, I'm going to take this $800 phone from the past. I mean, it's probably worth about $400 now. And uh, do this, that, and the other and try to repair it myself. So uh, to actually get it repaired is uh, $10 for the parts and then more than likely going to a phone repair shop and being like, let me give you 60 bucks for your time and have you fix this for me. So overall, it's about a $100 repair, and I'm not urgently needing that right now. Anyhow, the next bit of this is going to be my adventure tomorrow, because I am... Um, well, actually, I just got informed uh, a little while ago that apparently it's going to be raining tomorrow. So there's a good possibility that I'm going to take my van out to where the beach is and start pulling things out of it, and it's going to start raining. Maybe go stop by... Uh... <sighs> and, uh do something else, but there's a good odds that tomorrow's video is going to be me in a van in the rain, hanging out at the beach, and then the rain's going to stop, and I'm going to run out of the van for like 10 minutes, go running down the beach and yelling and waving my arms around, and then back in the van as it goes back to raining, which is a possibility. There's also the possibility that the forecast is wrong, tomorrow's going to be a bright and sunshiny day, and, you know, whatever. Whatever is whatever. That's tomorrow. Cool. Anyhow, uh, that starts now, technically. Uh, so yeah, I threw stuff together, uh, that was supposed to be the bed panel for the bottom of the mattress that I'm putting in here, and then I realized if I actually raise the mattress, I don't have the room to sit up. And at one point, that's not an issue, at another point, it's one of those kind of things where, like, being able to chill on a comfortable mattress, stick a TV against that door there, frame out a couple of other things and have it so that then, you know, in the middle of a rainstorm or middle of the evening, I can sit in the back of my van, not be obvious that I'm in the back of my van, and enjoy video games and entertainment stuff would be nice. Uh, the other option, of course, is just kind of like sitting here at this back seat and then using like up here as my entertainment center, but it was one of those kind of things where, you know, I might, I might end up doing that. Uh, I wanted to put, I follow this dude, he calls himself Maverick, uh, he's a pretty cool kid, uh, and he has a truck bed conversion, and he has two giant drawers on the bottom of his truck bed doing conversion that he just opens up the back of his truck and pulls them up four feet, like four feet out of the back of his truck, and then has cooking arrangements and other stuff on that. I kind of want to build something like that, even though mine's going to be like eight feet long and it's going to have drop down legs, and I already know I'm going to put it on the passenger side of the van because the bed is going to be on the driver's side of the van but at the same time that drawer is going to be like only a foot and a half wide so while that's really good storage and a good place to put cooking equipment and other things to be able to have a pull-out kitchen it's one of those kind of things where I kind of want both sides but like only one drawer is going to be actually hatch liftable to be accessible so maybe I don't know. I'm kind of debating it back and forth in my head. I might just, because I know 
it's going to be a really cool part of this video here in a little bit is cutting off the seat belts in the back. And that's going to be used as strapping. And then the other thing for being able to hook the seat belts up here, and there's actually harnesses along the floor as well. And I'm going to, my idea is to kind of just do um, a spider web uh, netting on the top of, wow, that's, just as I said spider web, he climbed out from there you are yeah he just he just climbed out onto my windshield it's such a cute little thing like i'm down to have pet spiders in my van but maybe not you is that a jumping spider i think that is a jumping spider it's so small no refocus thank you itty bitty spider okay i gotta catch him before he runs off i am driving i'm still in oh oh excuse me I'll hop on the highway, go down to Pismo, go to the end of Grand Avenue, uh, kind of cut and frame cardboard for the interior of the van. I grab the frame that's supposed to be the lifter for my bed to be able to cut the cardboard on that to have a solid backing instead of uh, just kind of cutting cardboard midair because I've tried that before years ago. That just sucks. Um, uh, that, that, that's what I was going to work on, cutting out the seat belts, framing the windows with cardboard. Uh, hopefully that'll be done so then when I come back I can just stick my mattress inside uh, and then um, start working on sorting through everything in the garage, figuring out what I'm going to bring with me. It's actually kind of funny too because like once these seat belts are cut out I can use them as storage straps and things to be able to hold things in place. And uh, you know, that'll be useful, it'll be cool, I, they're not going to have buckles, which kind of stinks. Um, I'm not even sure what to do with the buckles because it's really really funny because it's it's the buckles that go into the actual lock but I don't have the lock because I don't have the seats because <laughs> I bought this van with the seats already moved um, it's actually a really funny story how we ended up running into this van and me freaking out about one E350 yeah sorry E250 and being like, yeah, that's really cool, it's really neat. And my dad's just like, let's go look at a bunch of other places. And I'm like, no, no, I'm pretty settled on this one. And then we go to another dealership, and this vehicle is in the lot with the seats removed and the roof rack. And I'm like, oh my God, it's glorious. And I'm like, but this is like $4,000. I, I don't have that money, this isn't gonna work. And my dad's just like, that's fine. And I'm like, what? <laughs> so my dad loaned me money, and I still need to pay him back. And I now owe my dad, I think like $2,600. <laughs> and, uh, I don't know, that'll be a story for a whole different video, you know. But, uh, yeah, I don't know, once I get this all settled down, and then once I can actually be like, you know, I have my van down locked tight, I have my stuff down locked tight, and I can focus without having any other sidetrack thoughts with DoorDash and making income, then it'll be like, cool, alright, nice, stable, secure, start making payments to pay back my dad. Um, anyhow, I'm going to stop this recording, because that's what I should do. And uh, I'll get back to you in a little bit. Alright, so mounted to a tripod, mounted to a dock. Alright, so first what I'm gonna do is I'm just connect the battery. <laughs> so I can leave things open and around. See I used to have both these wrenches in my fanny pack because what's very amusing is the wrench needed to release my battery for my engine and my van. The same wrench that can remove the gas tank from my bicycle. My motorized bicycle. So I can store it and move it around. So the idea was oh that's not gonna hold itself up. Where does the bar go? That's not on the glass, where did the bar go? There you are, okay. So this goes over here, this goes over there. That's not good. All right, that's not even staying up properly. Sorry. <sighs> All right. I'm gonna, 
I'll be right back. Woo! All right. So, yeah, I have uh, dishwashing gloves. Threw those on to protect my hands. Went over to the battery. Um, I really want something to wash my hands right now, but I don't have anything to wash my hands. So I'm going to wash over to, walk over to the bathrooms later. And, uh... So yeah, I basically disconnected the positive basis of my battery, specifically to remove the lights, to be able to have the doors over here open, to be able to move the cardboard over this way for what I'm going to be using to cover the windows, and then I have this back door right here open, and I have a shovel and a hula hose that was given to me for by somebody that I worked with. And yeah, so there's some tools holding that open, some tools holding that open. It's going to be really nice to have a shoe like a hula ho. Ho, 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 ho. It's such a weird tool name. And uh, so yeah, I'm going to cut out my, uh, my uh, seat belts back here. I said I have seats for back here. And what's going to be really, really neat is I already cut out this one compared to this over here, of course, I'm going to be able to get those removed, and then, so I'm going to be left with a floor bracket, and that itself, and so there's going to be three of these, because so, there's one up here, and one over there. I'm not entirely sure if I'm centered on anything because the camera lens is over here. And while I could be filming in one side, I feel like I should just kind of stick to this camera lens specifically because the quality of the other camera lens is slightly better. That's kind of the nonsense and sucky things about modern phones and past phones. Is having an older phone, your screen facing camera is going to be a less quality than your normal back of camera camera. Uh, I think it's just a larger lens. Um, so yeah, anyhow, I also really, really want to record this sound. So this is gonna be kinda cool. Uh, what part was right? So what's really, really neat about this is that the mechanism that retracts the seat belt actually doesn't have this seem to have a deceleration device which means it will just endlessly spin and so I cut out this one here and went ooh that's such a great sound I want to record this one and the other ones to be able to have the audio file of the sound as well as just to be able to be able to check it out I don't know maybe get like a musical editing software to be able to sample this object and place it into a song or some kind of music to be written. Maybe kind of cool. Alright. My hair truly now flies everywhere. I believe I now have what's considered mermaid hair, but I haven't actually tried measuring it. So anyhow. was a lot more rougher than I thought it would be. Mm -hmm. Like just my luck, it's fully zoomed in. So anyhow, here's the second one along this wall. Really, really, such a strange and unique sound. And I already have these seat belts latched into place specifically, so that then 
I know that they're the ones for that seat. I don't know why it's designed like this, but that's how it is. This seat belt goes up here, latches behind the door, and it goes all the way across that gap to wherever that is shoulder. I don't know, maybe I'll have to sew in a little harness juncture that attaches it to the corner of... Where is the lens? The lens is right... Yeah, all right. To be able to attach it to this corner right there permanently. I mean, not permanently, to have it loop down through a holder that holds it there. You know, that plastic piece that was right there would have been perfect. But no, I destroyed that. All right, give me a minute. All right, it's been like four minutes. Sorry. Very metallic. So now there's one hanging point, two hanging point, three hanging points, and the seatbelt. And then buckles. And I think I'm just going to leave it as three straps along the side. They're actually pretty good distance. And I don't, I don't know what I can use them for, but my point was also, you know, doubles as a strapping point for the interior of the van to have something tied down. And they're actually pretty good size metal brackets. So, for the most part, uh, you know, I could attach something there. But my idea is to kind of go out and get mountain climbing equipment to hang some backpacks. Two backpacks up here. Obviously, that's for hanging clothes. And then there's a matching one here on the exact opposite side. I believe somewhere I have one, or I may be able to just buy one. The other thing is, like, I have another hook there and another hook there. It'd be really, really cool to be able to figure out how to replace that one, because I think that one got ripped out. Um, technically, I could just buy one of these, but there's actually a hole there, so I might have to get a hold of my friend to help me fabricate something. Um, so now I'm going to uh, cut the seatbelt on the other side. That's funny. Buy a thread. Ow! Got my finger. Genius! So, now I have five buckles with nothing to click them into. One stretch fully detached. Five still attached to the floor of the bus. I kind of thought to myself, you know, I'm not going to cut all of them out specifically because, you know, why not just keep them attached to the vehicle? Uh, it's not like I can't buy tie downs and ratchet straps for the roof independently anyway, and I already have a bunch of strappage anyhow. So I have cordage. I'm like, oh. It's right behind me. <laughs> so, here's this for a clothes hanger. The jellyfish fell, so I'll have to put that on and back up. Oh, scrappage. So my other stuff. It's kind of cool because there's a button snap here, and this one will snap up to here, but this one over on this side doesn't have a button strap, so that was kind of a why. And then... Uh, some hanging points over there and now I'm going to do some measurements 
and cut some cardboard for some windows. <sighs> Tripod, mobile thing, cell phone holder on top of cardboard. This is a, what is it, ping pong ball table? I think that's what it was. And it was given to me by my dad's partner and uh, I'm using it as a cutting board. Sorry. Uh, so, I've been listening to music on my phone. I created this template. It's a little bit longer than the window. And it's probably six inches taller. So, I am going to put this together. And use it as a template to cut things. Give me one second. Alrighty, a little bit more presentable and more structured as a workspace. Of course, I misplaced my knife. Genius. Where did you go? Brilliant. Inspiring. Magnifico. Where? That's really weird. I'm actually surprised both of these will work. Of course! Of course! Alright, so, surprisingly enough, this section barely fits specifications. This section is the only one left untouched, which is kind of surprising. Kind of neat. So, alrighty. Separated two pieces, grab my template. Toss this over here, toss this over here. Begin a Disney song. So what I'm making is a series of sunshades and these will be cut specifically to fit into the windows and they're gonna be about three layers thick and um, blocks out all the light so that nobody can tell that I'm in the van. And specifically for urban areas and when I'm in the forest and XYZ wherever and I can do like this full setup of camp for a couple of days, I'll have canopy, tarps, uh, all the storage off my roof on the ground and then everything mostly vacated out of here except for uh, comfort, comfort sleeping area and a series of different stations for all my different needs. Uh, so yeah, that'll be nice. Um, let's see, how do we do this? Alright, so that's out of the way at least. Let's stop my legs! So, of course, the principle is to be able to stealth camp. Cool factor. Could be living in a van down by the river! Okay, so let's do. All right. Okay. So yeah, having uh, sun barriers to keep the sun out, to be able to sleep nice and peacefully, and light barriers to keep light in, so no one can tell from the outside. I'm. Chilling in the van next to Mall. Because it's going to be really cool being able to travel around and see all my different friends in all the different spots around the nation. Uh, the sun is going to begin setting and it's going to be blinded by the light. So, anyhow, I'm using a template, cutting edges. Setting up three templates for these windows, this one, that one, that one. Those are my largest windows. And then I'm going to set up templates for each of the smaller windows, these two, and the doors. And then probably using a normal sunshade in the front. Um, 
So the sun's gonna be going down, time's gonna be changing. I 